Welcome to Whitetail Season here at AmericanHunter.org. It's the 28th of November, and this coming weekend is opening of Iowa's shotgun season. And on our, our farm, that's not really something that we take lightly. Kids love hunting with guns, and we've got a spot up here. I'm going to take you to it, and we're going to put a ground blind up. And we're going to have a really good hunt, I believe, this weekend. But first, I've got to prepare for it, and I've got to cut some cedar boughs off a couple of these trees along here, throw them in the truck, take with to brush the blind in. And you'll see once I get there what a cool spot this is and why I think we're going to kill some deer. So uh, come on along and join me. We're looking forward to uh, having a lot of fun this coming up weekend. put it up upside down so I get to do it again <laughs> there's a lot of history in this spot right here if you go back to the 2009 season I was hunting a hickory tree you can see it right across this opening it's probably 150 to 200 yards away and a great big giant eight pointer showed up around the 20, 20th or so of November. What was that up in the tree? It's the 20th of November. I feel like I could maybe just drop an arrow on him. We're so close to him. I mean, the stand is probably. 14 or 15 feet, which is fine. It's going to be close range warfare, that's for sure. He ducked to avoid, well he doesn't, he's not trying to avoid the arrow, he ducked because he heard the bow drop down to load up his legs to run and I caught him up in the neck, just in the meat of the neck. Yeah. I knew that the deer didn't die, uh, just, you know, that just doesn't kill them. Well, we put the cameras out, and uh, in the middle of December, I picked up a couple of pictures of him right here in this open gate, right where the truck is sitting. So I knew there was some chance of killing this deer back in this area again. Of course, I had now this vendetta, you know, to, to finish some business there that I had left unfinished. So I ended up putting a tree stand up, two tree stands in this little tree right here. and. Uh, Drew Yarkoski and I were sitting in there, and I think it was the <clears throat> evening of December 23rd or 20, I don't think it was Christmas Eve, it must have been like the 25th or 26th maybe, 26th, he's standing over here. <laughs> but anyway, the same deer comes out down here to my left, and I'm hunting with a bow, and he, he spends probably 20 minutes or more out in this food plot, and the does are working toward us. We're just in this little bitty tree. I mean, two guys like buzzards sitting on a branch up there. And uh, so they're working toward us. He's behind them. He's about 70 yards away. And I'm thinking if they get within 50, you know, with nothing in between us, you know, I'm, I'm going to be shooting. You know, obviously I'd take a 20 yard shot, but I was ready for just a little bit closer. Well, off across the valley, a couple of coyotes came out and started running around. And they got those deer that were sitting or feeding over on that part. Um, they, got, they got them kind of spooked up and they ran over this way 
and the deer here, of course, they got spooked up. Before this buck could get into bow range, he turned and stiff legged walked off the field. That was the last time we saw that deer. That was 2009. And here we sit uh, pulling cards out of the cameras in the middle of October, I think around the 20th or so of October of this year, 2011 season, almost two years later. And who do we find on the cameras? Right here in the same gate opening, but that same buck. And we'd come to call in Bubba. And I don't have him on the American Hunter hit list. Had he showed up earlier, he definitely would have been on the hit list because he is, he's in basic eight pointer, but I mean, you look at the pictures of this deer and he's turned into an absolute stud. I mean, he was a giant even back in 2009 as eight pointers go, but now he's just a total beast. And unfortunately though, this deer was only here for a couple of days and then he's, he was gone and a buddy of mine who's got land a mile from here, he was picking him up on the trail cameras a mile in that direction. And I know he was spending some time on a farm that was a mile in that direction. And you know, he was half a mile away on this farm or a little bit less in another field back during that three day period when, when we had him on this farm. So, you know, this is part of his, part of his range, but uh, it's not like he's any kind of a homebody. But long shot or not, this is probably, if I had to pick one deer that I hope the kids get a crack at, that's the buck because he is a heck of a deer and we've got some unfinished business with this deer. So um, you see the blind, I'm almost finished with it here. I've got a couple more cedar boughs to put on it. It's right underneath the tree where we almost killed that deer uh, back in December of 2009. So that's setting the stage uh, for this weekend's hunt. So come back again next week and see how this story ends. We'll be right back here again at AmericanHunter.org with the next episode of Whitetail Season.